What, what are you doing? Killing monsters. Call us old-fashioned, but we do enjoy a good book from time to time, as we sit by the fireplace, sipping some freshly brewed tea. By book, we mean a game based on the book, and by fireplace, we mean our TV, and by freshly brewed tea, we mean a nice and cold soda. There are plenty of games based on books out there, and sometimes you wouldn't even expect it. So, in the interest of saving you time, we've gone ahead and found 10 games you didn't know were based on books. In the interest of not trying to sound like an after-school special, we're going to refrain from saying, did you know, or it may surprise you. So, did you know that Assassin's Creed is surprisingly based on a Slovenian book from 1938? It's actually more loosely based on the historical events that took place throughout the Crusades, but the game uses the general story arc and characters from Vladimir Bartol's book, Alamut. You'll pay for this. You and all your kind. Alamut being the fortress of the Hashashin, from where they planned all their Hashashinations. The biggest element that the game used from Alamut is the Assassin's motto, which in the book is, nothing is an absolute reality, all is permitted. The Leap of Faith also makes an appearance in Alamut, except the character who does it dies. Which is probably more realistic than surviving a 100 foot drop into a small pit of hay. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son Isaac will be this sacrifice. The Binding of Isaac is a game loosely based on the Old Testament of the Bible. More specifically, the tale of Abram and Isaac. For those unfamiliar with that one, it's the one where God asks Abram to sacrifice his son Isaac. The game changes a couple of details, namely that it's Isaac's mother attempting to stabby stabby. In the Bible, however, Isaac doesn't escape and doesn't play through a whole bunch of different levels, and the tale doesn't have 13 different endings after each major boss fight. That would be pretty cool though. Books with alternate endings. But just as he accepted his fate, God intervened, sending an angel down from above to stop his mother's hand. And just like that, it was over. Ah! Shit! Parkson's down! We need backup! Lugo, distance. About a hundred yards away. Let's move! Spec Ops The Line is considered to be a direct retelling of Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, with the main theme being kept very much intact, namely that there's little difference between the so-called civilized people and the so-called savages. In Spec Ops, the civilized people come in the form of John Conrad and Captain Walker's small band of US soldiers who are tasked with saving the locals of Dubai from a cataclysmic series of sandstorms. There's four of us. We're okay, but we're running out of ammo. Can't keep them back for much longer. Along the way, the soldiers witness some horrifying atrocities, all attributed to Colonel Conrad. Once the team manages to get to Conrad, however, we learn some things. Some very interesting things that we won't spoil here, because we've already spoiled them in many other videos. They took him to the nest. How are we going to get across there? Time to delve into some Chinese literature. Odyssey to the West is a reimagining of the novel Journey to the West by Wu Qing. Unlike the original story that was set in a fantastical version of ancient China, the game is set 150 years in a future post-apocalyptic world following a global war, with only remnants of humanity left, along with the still active war machines left over from the conflict. Like the original story, however, the plot revolves around someone who forces the help and protection of a warrior, with many characters sharing their same names and roles. Trip and Monkey, for example, both play major roles in the game as well as in the book. Before we hit the surface, put your gas mask on. The guy can be like a goldfish outside his room. In the big twist of the decade, the game Metro 2033 is based on a book called, you guessed it, Metro 2033. Written by the Russian author Dmitry Glugovsky, the story is about a nuclear holocaust which drives the people of Moscow into the underground subway system in an effort to survive. As with most nuclear holocaust based tales, factions are created and they inevitably fight. Because even in a nuclear apocalypse, folks still need to fight. 
For those who have read the book and played the game, the general atmosphere was captured quite well by 4A Games and Deep Silver. The game took some liberties, but we're not going to hold that against them. It's a fantastic game, based on an even better book. I must go recon the situation. Listen carefully, Atim. If I'm not back here by morning, you must get to police station and find a man named Miller. They offered you this city. From fiction to philosophy, we dive into Bioshock. And you Rapture? It. Dive? Get it? Ah, we crack it? ourselves up. Bioshock wasn't necessarily based on one book by Ayn Rand, but rather the theme of Rand's books, The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged. Objectivism. Stop. What you got? Let's get really philosophical for a moment, shall we? Objectivism is, partly, the belief that reality exists independently from consciousness. What does that mean? It means that Bioshock's storyline relies heavily on the tenets of objectivism. Also, Bioshock's main antagonist and creator of Rapture, Andrew Ryan, shares the same initials as Ayn Rand, the creator of objectivism. There's a lot more to all this, but there are other entries to get to. A slave obeys. The Witcher games, based on the Witcher TV series, based on the Witcher film, based on the Witcher novels, all originate from the same place, Poland. The books are written by Andrzej Sapkowski and feature the main protagonist from the games, Geralt of Rivia. The games don't stray too much from the source material, while adding the usual elements one would expect. Progressive upgrade systems, morally great choices, rampant violence, Although, that does take place in the books as well. Of course, along with Geralt in the main character's department is Ciri, who features just as heavily in the books as she does in the games. The Witcher games are probably one of the best book-to-video game adaptations we've ever played. Just make it quick, Geralt. What the? At the midpoint on the journey of life, I found myself in a dark forest, for the clear path was lost. Any literature majors here? Or literature fans in general? Uh, it was worth a shot. So, it probably won't surprise you to find that Dante's Inferno is based on Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, which is an allegory for the soul's journey towards God. <laughs> The game, however, is about Dante's journey through the nine circles of hell to rescue his beloved Beatrice from Lucifer himself. What kind of man locks up helpless women? They're the game quite accurately references the Divine Comedy, visually representing each circle of hell as closely as they are described within Alighieri's epic. That's pretty much where the similarities end, what with the source material being from the 14th century and in poem form. <laughs> Russian games sure love a nuclear apocalypse, and it's no shock that the folks who worked on Metro 2033 also worked on Stalker. Stalker takes place in a world where a second nuclear catastrophe happens at Chernobyl and it drastically changes the area around it, forcing the player into a sort of survival FPS style game in and around Chernobyl. The game is based on the book Roadside Picnic by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. Loosely based, that is. The book is about an extraterrestrial event that took place in 12 different areas simultaneously. But loosely based still counts in our book. See what we did there? Sorry, we'll show ourselves out. The King of the King of the Tomorrow, we march on Casterly Rock. And House Forrester has been given the We're full of surprises today, and this game is no different. The Telltale Games iteration of Game of Thrones is, you guessed it, based on the novels by George R. R. Martin. The game does tell its own story, using a minor reference in the book, A Dance with Dragons, to the House Forrester as a starting point. He's a drunk, a liar, and an arrogant prick. You'd better watch your tongue, Bowen. It could be much worse. The, the game ties in a lot more with the TV series than it does with the books, but that's not really why we're here, is it? Thematically, Game of Thrones is precisely what you expect from a Telltale game and stays true to the source material despite creating its own plot. You served me well. Let me fight for you, my lord. 
So those are the 10 you probably didn't know were based on books. Or maybe you already knew, but we can't know that you know what we think we know. Did we miss any major game adaptations of books? Let us know in the comments and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more literally gaming here at Zooming Games.